Raven Elise TV. Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven, and as promised, I am back with a, another wig video. I'm kind of just revisiting my wig that I released last month. This is my collaboration with my first wig. So you guys have kind of already heard about these wigs that I created in collaboration with my first wig. If you missed that video, I will link it down below in case you need to, you know, watch it and get the background story. But as promised, I wanted to kind of revisit it, not only to show you guys the straight version, because I was showing you guys the wavy version in the other video but also I promised you guys that I would do an updated frontal styling tweeze your frontal make it look natural how to put it on video I think I've done a couple of videos that touch on this topic already but as I get new wigs like every time I wear a wig I kind of update my technique I learn new things I get better at it so I wanted to do an updated tutorial so anyway yeah this is my collaboration wig well one of the two with my first wig this is the box that it comes in I did two wigs they're both a lob a long bob. The other one that I was wearing in my other video when I first announced this collaboration was the wavy version. This is the straight sleek version. So I decided to come back with the straight style for this one. So you guys, it is super important to customize your lace wigs before you wear it. So for starters, of course you need a lace wig. So a good one to choose would be this one from my first wig. This is a really good starter wig. It's just a simple wig that's really easy to work with and customize. You can basically do whatever you want to it. So the first thing that you're going to need when you want to start customizing your wig is a styrofoam wig head. This comes super in handy. It's super important that you use one of these. I just feel that it makes all of the difference. So get yourself a styrofoam wig head like this girl right here. You can get it at any beauty supply store and they also sell them at craft stores. I've seen them in craft stores like Michael's Hobby Lobby as well. I would recommend trying to find one that has this hole in the bottom. If not, you can kind of just cut your own hole in the bottom and then you can use something like a tripod or a light stand for any of my other youtubers out there you probably have some type of tripod lying around that has like a stick on it and you can put it on top of there and use it as a little model so that your head is nice and stable and you can adjust the height to where you can work on it. It makes it so much easier. I recently discovered this from seeing other hairstylists do it and it helps so much more than trying to like hold it in your lap or trying to have it on the table. From there, the next thing that you're going to need is some pins. You can use actual wig T-pins which can be found at the beauty supply store or you can just use regular sewing pins um, that you can find at any craft store. They work the same way. Now, if you were to get a My First wig and you're getting the wig kit that comes with it, it's going to come with this rat tail comb that you're going to need. And it's also gonna come with a few of these little clips that you're definitely going to need as well. The other things that you're going to need to start customizing your wig are a pair of scissors, really any old scissors will do. You're going to need a pair of good tweezers that have a good grip. And then you're going to need a little eyebrow razor. These are just little eyebrow shapers that you can get at any beauty supply store. They're like a dollar. Yes, you need them. Okay, so let's get down to business. I want this to be as detailed and as easy to understand as possible because I know when I've watched a lot of these other videos trying to learn myself how to do it, it's just kind of like when I get done watching it, I still don't really understand. It wasn't really a good view in the video. So hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully this updated version is a little bit easier for you guys to understand. So the first thing that you're going to definitely do is unbox your wig. You do not need to wash your wig first. I actually recommend washing your wig after you customize the front of it. So just unbox your wig, place the wig on your styrofoam head, and pin it in place with either your T-pins or your regular sewing pins. You're going to notice that your wig does have excess lace going around the forehead. Leave that on there. That is actually where you're going to pin it on, just so that you're not sticking pins all inside the actual wig. Just use the excess lace to stick the pins through and hold it in place on your styrofoam head. So when you get a fresh lace wig, and this wig from my first wig is a complete lace front wig. It has lace going all around the perimeter of the head. It gives you a big old piece of lace to work with in terms of customizing your hairline and your part. And then there's just tracks in the back. So when you have a lace front wig like this, typically when you first unbox it, it's going to have a very boxy, straight, 
thick hairline that's just a one size fits all hairline and it's gonna look nothing like your actual hairline. They give it to you this way because they want you to be able to customize it yourself. Everybody's hairline is different. Some people do have thick hairlines, some people have really wavy hairlines, some people have really straight hairlines and people wanna go for different looks. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually to thin out this thick hairline that it comes with. Typically nobody's hairline is super, super thick going all the way across the front of their face. So you want to look in the mirror at your own natural hairline and kind of analyze your hairline and notice where you have thin spots, notice the shape of your hairline and try to mimic that on your wig as much as possible just so that you're not going into it completely blind, completely random. At least you have a picture in your head of what your natural hairline looks like and you can kind of mimic that. Now, this is where the eyebrow razor comes in handy. Now, previously I was just using tweezers. I wasn't using a razor at all and it it would take forever to tweeze every little individual hair out of the wig one by one. Getting an eyebrow razor saves me so much time and I honestly feel like it gives me a better effect at the end of the day anyway. So what you're gonna wanna do to start thinning out the hairline is part off a section and it's just basically just a little bit more than the baby hairs of the wig and pull that piece of hair out of your way. So now you're working on the perimeter of the wig but you're not working on the exact perimeter of the wig. You're basically giving yourself what I call a bumper where you're not just pulling the hairline completely back and you know erasing hair completely from the edge of the hairline and then take your eyebrow razor and start shaving into where that part is. You're basically taking out hairs from in between that bumper and the hairs that are on the rest of the wig. So just go slowly and work your way little by little shaving out some of the hairs and thinning out the hairline and then every so often take your fine tooth comb and comb through and get rid of all those loose hairs that you just shaved out. Out. Step back from your wig periodically, look at it. You can even try it on in between steps just to make sure that you're not taking off too much hair or creating too much of just a straight up bald spot. You're just trying to create an overall thin look but not a bald spot look if that makes sense. So for a side part wig like this that you know you're definitely going to be wearing in a side part, me typically I would really focus on the parts that are going to be showing. This other part underneath my hair right here doesn't show because the bang hangs over it and so you're really not gonna see what's going on on my hairline right here. But you're definitely gonna see it right here and going all across this other side of the lower part of the hair. So I typically like to focus a lot on this chunk of the hairline and on this little chunk of the hairline. I honestly don't really even bother to do this part because I know I'm not really gonna be showing it. But if you do plan on showing it and pulling your hair back and doing other styles, just go ahead and do this side as well. For my actual real natural hairline, I have a lot of thin hair going across my edges right here and so I like to really thin out the wig on this side of the hair. So once you've thinned out the overall hairline with your razor you can be done with your razor and that is when you can get your tweezers. This is now where you're going to create your waves and divots and dips and bends in your hairline. With the razor you're not really creating a new shape of a hairline you're just creating a new thinness of a hairline if that makes sense but it's still going to be completely straight 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 once you get done with the razor so that's when you need to move on to your tweezers and this is how you're going to take that straight line and make it kind of more wavy and have some dips in it and things like that as you can see on the hairline now I have created these little dips on this part and just some little dips on this part as well that just makes it not so straight across because if it's just completely straight across I feel like it kind of looks like a Disney character or something. It just looks more like a costume wig to me when it's just completely straight across. So I like to create those little, almost like a zigzag effect of the hairline. Now you don't want this zigzag dip and dive effect to be too uniform. You don't want it to be like a perfect zigzag because then that's gonna look weird as well. You want it to be very irregular, very random. Just put random dips here and there. It doesn't have to be perfect. So you're taking your tweezers and you're grabbing individual hairs and literally ripping them out of the lace. If you look really closely into your lace wig you will see that they're each individually knotted on each strand of hair is just knotted on you can actually see the little knots you're basically trying to grip on right on that little knot or as close to the root as possible and just grip really tight and pull really tight really fast if you're being sloppy with the way that you're tweezing the hair you can easily rip 
through the whole wig, rip through the lace, and you're gonna end up having a, like a hole in your lace, and it's not gonna be cute. So be careful, be careful of where you're gripping. Make sure you're only gripping the actual strands of hair and not gripping the lace, and not just like blindly going like this. And try to make it match up with your natural hairline. My natural hairline kind of has a wave going on this side, if you can see where it dips in right here. So I like to create that effect. Just whatever you wanna do. Don't be afraid to stop and take the wig off of the styrofoam head and actually try it on your head and look at it and see, okay, no, that part still looks really thick and really weird. I need to take more off of there. Or, okay, let me stop tweezing right here because it's starting to get a little bald. Like, you kind of have to try it on just to make sure that you're not taking too much off and things like that. So that's honestly pretty much it for the actual hairline. So then you want to work on your actual part. Typically, when you get a lace wig, the part itself is going to be very dense. It's not going to really even show the part very much. And you want it to show because when you part your natural hair, you see your scalp like this. So so you want to create that effect. So what you're going to have to do is take your tweezers or a little bit of your razor as well, but mostly with your tweezers, take out some of the hair that's in the part, widen it up a little bit. Don't be scared to widen it up and take out some of those hairs because you don't want the hair to be bumping up, you know, just so thick right there. And honestly, it's going to look a lot thinner on the styrofoam head because you're going to see this bright white head showing through. So it might be a little bit alarming when you look at it on your head. You're looking like, oh, I'm taking out way too much hair. I'm making the part way too wide, way too thin. But really you're not because when you put it on your real head, it's not going to have that bright white showing through. It's actually going to have your hair and the wig cap showing through. So it's actually going to have a little bit more of a subtle effect when you really put it on. Just make sure that you widen up your part just so that it's nice and visible. You want want it to be visible at least I mean I'm telling you guys what to do but this is just really what I do and how I like it to look I know that everybody kind of has their own ideals when it comes to how they want their wig to look so of course do you do what you like just do it until you like it you don't have to do exactly what I do but these are kind of just the basics so from then once you've done your hairline and you've done the part and you think you got it how you like it do not cut off the excess lace yet try it on one more time really make sure you like it and then take Take it back off, put it back on the styrofoam head, get your scissors, and cut off the excess lace. Now, here's another new thing, something different that I've started doing now too. When I used to cut the lace off of my wigs, I used to try and cut it as close to the hairline as possible, like just cut it right, right, right there because I didn't want any extra lace on there. But now I actually give myself a little tiny bit of room. I leave a little tiny bit of excess lace on there because it actually helps your wig lay flatter in the front. It gives you something to kind of smooth down. It gives you something to grip onto if you are going to be taping or gluing down your wig. Even if you're not planning on taping or gluing down your wig, I still feel like having that little bit of excess lace in the front helps everything transition more. It gives you more of a smooth, you know, because it goes from your skin to the lace to the hair instead of just from your skin to the hair and then it kind of just has a blunt effect. So go ahead and cut it off. Also there's going to be lace in the nape of your neck on this wig as well so cut that lace off as well. And I kept all of the hair that I ended up tweezing out, razoring out of this wig during my customization process to show you just how much hair I actually took off of this wig through tweezing and everything. So it's a lot. It's actually probably a lot more than you think it would be. So now it comes to the part where you actually need to put on your wig and get ready to go out. So how I put on my wig is I typically like to have my hair braided down flat in straight back cornrows. That's just the flattest way that I can get my hair. Some people who have short hair, they can just kind of slick their hair back into a little bun and kind of cheat it. I used to do that a lot because I'm really not good at braiding. Um, but really straight back cornrows is the best way to go and then from there you put on a wig cap I prefer to wear the mesh wig caps just because they're more breathable but if you like to wear an actual stocking cap it will be tighter and it will make your natural hair even flatter which will make your wig lay even flatter so either kind of wig cap is good and when you get this my first wig it will come with a wig cap so you won't have to worry about buying one so when you first put your wig on it's not gonna look perfect obviously um, but you just want to make sure that you 
secure it on. So this wig does have an elastic adjustable strap around the nape of the neck and the back that you can tighten if you need your wig to be tighter. And this wig does have a comb in the back and on the sides and on the top as well, I believe. So you can use those combs to slide up under your braids, up under your natural hair to really just lock it in and make sure that your wig is not going anywhere. So make sure that your wig fits really, really tight. It may feel a tiny bit uncomfortable when you first put it on, but trust me, you would rather have it be tighter rather than looser because the tighter that you can get it on, the flatter it's going to lay and the more seamless your hairline is going to lay as well. And since the hairline is completely customized on this wig now, I do not have to wear the wig pushed back behind my natural hairline. I can actually pull it a little bit forward above my natural hairline. So it's actually about a centimeter forward than my real hairline so that the actual hairline of the wig is the only thing that's showing. You don't need to have any of your own baby hairs out. You don't need to have any of your own hair out whatsoever. If you choose to have some of your little bit, like I have a couple of my little baby hairs out just to kind of make it look even more natural and just get that baby hair effect. But really you don't even need that. You can pull it completely in front of your hair. That way you're not damaging your natural hairline. And that's honestly the best way to go in my opinion. That is also something that I'm changing because in my past videos and when I was wearing wigs before I was wearing them a little bit behind my hairline because I thought it would look more natural to have my natural hairline and then blend into the wig but honestly you can almost always see that line of demarcation no matter what you do at least on me especially if your natural hair is not matching the color of the wig so I honestly just feel like just go for it go full steam ahead and pull that wig up above your hairline and let the wig do all the talk so with that extra little piece of lace, remember how I said you're leaving a little bit of a halo of lace? It's actually going to help it lay even more flatter and have a seamless transition. So you can't see my lace right now. I mean, it's made to be very unnoticeable. Now, there are multiple ways to, you know, really, really secure your wig and make sure that your hairline is lying flat. You can use tape, you can use glue, or you can use the elastic band method. Truth be told, the elastic band method is probably the safest way, but it takes an extra step of getting a piece of elastic and sewing it onto your wig so that your wig is just basically pulled down so freaking tight on your head that it's going to be flat. And it works, and I have done that on some of my other wigs and it does look good. I will link my friend Jayla's video down below so she can show you guys the elastic band method. And like I said, it works. I personally have never used the tape method, but I've seen that work as well and there's tons videos on YouTube if you want to actually tape down your whole hairline just to make sure that it's completely not going anywhere and laying completely fat. I don't ever use tape but I have used a little bit of glue and that is the method that I'm using today. The ear flaps of your wig are the parts that are going to most likely cause you trouble because they're not being held down by anything if you're not using the elastic band method. And if you are using the elastic band method it's going to be pulling it back behind your ear a little bit so this little chunk of your hair right here that is kind of in front of your ear is going to be showing outside of your wig when you're using the elastic band method at least on me I don't know if it does that on other people but it kind of makes my wig pull back behind my ear and then it has this part showing right here which you know you can kind of blend it in and it's fine but I like my wig to actually you know come all the way around and go all the way around to my hairline right here so you have to glue it down or tape it down otherwise it's just going to be flying up so I didn't bother going out and buying special wig glue or ordering special wig glue I probably will at some point. I mean, it's it's not that expensive or anything, but I just didn't have any on hand. What I did have on hand was lash glue. And lash glue is just basically an adhesive that is safe, obviously, for your eyes. And the thing is, if it's safe for the most sensitive part of your face, which is your eyes, then it's also safe to use on other areas of your face. So I'm just taking this regular old clear lash glue and I am applying it to my skin right on where my ear flap is on my wig. So you want to be super careful of your edges with this. You do not want to be putting glue all over your edges because inevitably you're going to end up ripping out some of your edges and that's never good. So you want to make sure that you're only putting glue on your skin. Do not put glue in your edges. Do not put glue on your hairline. Put it right in front of your hairline, right on that skin that's just right there. That way there's no glue touching your hair. That way there's no way that your hair is going to get ripped out and you're going to snatch your own edges. Don't snatch your own edges. And this is also 
also where that little halo of excess lace on your wig is really going to come in handy because that is what you're going to be gluing down. So place the glue, allow the glue to get tacky just like you would with eyelashes or anything, and then smoosh down your wig and glue down that little ear flap using the excess lace as what you're gluing down. And then you kind of just hold it there for 30 seconds and make sure it has a good bond and then boom, you're good to go. You only need to apply glue in that little small little area. You don't need to actually glue the whole side of your head right here because that's automatically gonna be held down just by gluing down the corner. So even still then, you're really lowering your chances of hurting your hairline because you're only using glue in a small area and you're only putting it on your skin and the glue is safe for your skin. So when you've done that, and now you have a really tight hold to where you can do like this, you can tuck your hair behind your ear and it's completely seamless right there. And I have used this glue method a couple of times before and I've never had an issue with it. It just basically peels right up when you're ready to take it off, especially by kind of like the end of the day, it's gonna start peeling up anyway. The glue reacts to oil, so if you, the oils from your skin or the oils from your makeup is gonna, what's gonna make it kind of start peeling up on its own anyway. If it's not peeling up on its own, you can take any type of oil and rub it on there to remove it super easily. And I don't need to apply glue anywhere else because that's being held down just by the tightness of the wig itself. So now, moving on to the makeup part of it, which is where you can kind of take some makeup and blend it even more to make it look even more seamless. I'm just using a little eyeshadow palette from e.l.f., just a really affordable palette, and just a little angled brush, and I'm going into the lightest shade of the palette, which kind of matches the shade of my scalp. You can also just use your foundation powder, your concealer, just anything that matches your skin tone or matches your scalp tone. Um, and just go in and fill in your parting space just to make it pop even more and just to make it actually match the color of your scalp even more. So I always typically go in with some makeup and do my part with it. And then if your edges are just looking like it's not really matching up or your edges are not really looking full or just you see a random little bald spot between your edges and the wig and you know how it is, you can just take some dark colored eyeshadow, whether it be dark brown, black, or whatever color your hair is, take it in a little angle brush and just fill in any little spots that you feel like need some extra help. Also, depending on your skin tone, if it is really showing your lace, if you feel like you can really see your lace on me, I can't even see my own lace like in person. Like I can barely tell where it actually is. You can only see it kind of catching the light in certain angles, but honestly on me, it's like I can't even see it. But depending on your skin tone, you might be able to see it a little bit. That's also where you can use some makeup to just kind of put makeup over that line of demarcation just so that it blends in with your face. And then of course from there, you can just style your wig in terms of if you wanna straighten it, if you wanna curl it, if you need to kind of flat and down the top like how I did in my blonde wig. You guys saw how I was using my hot curling wand to kind of flatten it down. Um, just whatever you want to do in terms of styling it and then after that you are done. So it's really not as hard as it looks you guys. It just really takes some practice. It takes a lot of trying on the wig, wearing the wig, going back and adjusting it to get your perfect look but it's really really not hard and you can really end up with a really nice natural look. So I know you guys want to practice, right? You guys want your own wig to be able to, you know, try this out. So... I have two wigs. I have one of each of my collabs with my first wig. So the straight one, the exact one that I'm wearing right now, and also the wavy one, which I wore in my last video about this collab. I have one of each and I'm going to be giving it away to you guys. This is just my way of saying thank you for supporting my collaboration and just supporting me in general, supporting my channel in general. I definitely wanted to give away some to you guys. So like I said, it's one straight one, one wavy one exactly like you see here it also comes with the full kit and caboodle everything that I showed in my first video like I said definitely check it out down below if you haven't seen it yet but everything that I showed in that video in terms of the wig stand the combs the clips all the extra stuff that it comes with you're going to get that too so it's basically just
just giving you a whole entire starter kit so that you can slay your lace wig. The owners of my first wig were emailing me telling me that the sales of my collaboration were doing really well. People are buying it. People are loving it. So I just wanted to thank you guys so much for supporting my collaboration, for rocking my little wig. Um, definitely tag me in photos. If you guys have already received your wigs, definitely tag me in photos of you wearing it. I want to see how you rock it. So there will be two lucky winners. One winner will win the straight one. One winner will win the wavy one. So if you would like to enter to win, just look in the description box for all of the giveaway details. It's been super cool having my own wigs with my own face and name on it on this website for you guys to be able to buy. I don't know. It's just so surreal. It's so fun. It's just such a fun project to be able to work with because I love wearing wigs and it's always something new when you wear a wig. Like even this right now, I feel like it's something new because I've had this hair cut before, but I didn't have it paired up with this dark hair color. So you guys have to tell me down below what you guys think of it on me. But yeah, so hopefully this video was helpful in terms of teaching you how to, you know, make your wig look natural, how to put it on and everything, or at least my version of how I do it. And yeah, definitely look down below for all of the giveaway details. And if you ordered the wig, shout out to you. Thank you so much. Tag me in your photos. And yeah, I think that's everything. So everything you need to know is down below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.